Dear learners and listeners, Namaskar. I am Dr. Shweta and I am here with you on the new program which is on emotions. When we meet our friends after a long time, we feel happy. When a baby clinches to her mother, she displays love. When we are praised by our parents and teachers, we feel proud of ourselves. Similarly, joy and sorrow, excitement and disappointment, love and fear. And many more emotions are experienced by us in our daily lives. In today's program, we will know what is an emotion and how these emotions are expressed and how emotions direct our behavior. So, the objectives of today's program are to describe what is an emotion, also to discuss the relationship of emotions with cognition and motivation, Describe the physiology of emotional experience and we will also discuss about various expressions of emotions. Let us start with our understanding of what is an emotion. The term emotion is derived from the Latin word that is emover, which means to stir up, agitate, excite or move. Emotions are generally referred to as a stirred up condition involving subjective experiences and affective reactions. They may be pleasant or unpleasant. When we talk of pleasant emotions, then we realize that pleasant emotions are a source of joy, whereas unpleasant emotions are related to disturbing mental states like aggression, fear, anxiety, etc. When we talk about emotions, then we must know that each emotion has three basic aspects. Let us discuss what are these three basic aspects. These are the cognitive aspect, the physiological aspect and the behavioral aspect. That is, whenever we are feeling or whenever we are under an emotion, how the thought process works, how the body reacts to it and how we behave under the influence of emotions. Let us discuss about all these aspects one by one. The first is cognitive aspect, that is the thought process. So as we all know, the cognitive aspect involves the thoughts, beliefs and expectations that are involved when we experience emotions. For example, your friend may find a novel rich in description of people and places, whereas you may find it unrealistic, that is your emotion your thought process about a particular aspect. The next is the physiological aspect of emotion. As the name suggests, it involves the physiological activation, that is the bodily activation. Say for example, emotions such as fear or anger may increase pulse rate, blood pressure and respiration. The last is the behavioral aspect of emotions. The behavioral aspect includes various forms of emotional expressions. Let me make it more clear to you. If you observe your parents during anger and happiness, you will notice that the facial expressions, bodily postures and tone of voice vary with anger, joy and other emotions. That is, under different emotional conditions, the expression of emotion is different or the facial expressions, bodily postures and the tone of voice varies. So this was all about the different aspects of emotions. In order to understand emotions more clearly, there are certain theories of emotion. We will discuss about three theories of emotion. The first is James Lane theory of emotion. William James and Carl Lange stated that Physiological changes give rise to emotional experience. That is, first you cry, then you feel sad, first you run, then you feel afraid. With this theory, we just want to know that how do we feel emotion. So according to James Link, in order to feel emotion, first of all, there has to be a change in the body. And when we realize that the changes are occurring in the body, then we experience emotion. It is very much clear from this diagram that first of all there has to be an event 
on the occurrence of that event we have certain physiological changes once we are aware of those changes then we feel a kind of emotion for example i see a bear which is an event then my heart runs and i start shaking so when i realize that my heart is running and my body is shaking then i feel fear or then i am afraid that is an emotion that is in order to emotion to take place first of all there has to be an event and event leads to body changes once we know that there are certain physiological changes then that leads to the experience of emotion this was about the james lang theory of emotion the next theory of emotion is cannon bad theory of emotion contrary to the james lang theory of emotion cannon and bad said that when we face an event we feel physiological changes and perception of emotion together that is when there is an event then the arousal and physiological changes as well as the emotional experiences happen together that is if i see a bear then my heart starts running my blood pressure rises my body starts shaking and i am afraid so all things are happening together that is the physiological changes and perception of emotions are happening together so this was how cannon and bard tried to explain that how the emotion happens skeeter and singer came with their own theory of emotion they emphasized on the cognitive processes they said that cognitive processes play a major role in the experience of emotion If you are aroused by an outside stimulus you will notice the arousal and look toward the environment to find out why the arousal has has occurred after that you will label which emotion you are experiencing for example a man startled by a dog shall label his state as fear whereas a student excited by success in the examination labels his state as happiness In order to make it more clear to you just imagine that on a high hill you are riding on a bicycle with your friend who is riding the bicycle your friend might have a feeling of fear when he looks at the height of the mountain whereas you will have a feeling of pleasure because you are concentrating or you are focusing on the beauty of the nature that is the thought process is influencing the emotional state your friend is experiencing the emotion of fear and you are experiencing the emotion of happiness or pleasure so that is the thought process which is influencing both of your emotional states so these were some theories of emotions we should also know that what are the different dimensions of emotions and what is the course of development of emotions when we talk about dimensions of emotions emotions can be placed along two dimensions that is the arousal and the valence that is one can have high or low degree of arousal and positive or negative example pleasant versus unpleasant emotional experiences that is sometimes you may feel pleasant experience and sometime you might have an unpleasant experience that is the two dimensions of emotion so this was about the dimensions of emotions let us discuss the development of emotions although the general ability to respond emotionally is present at birth only but emotional development is due to maturation and learning also let us know how for example children learn to express their emotions by imitating their parents as it is clear in this picture So this was about the two different dimensions of emotions as well as how we develop emotions throughout our life span that is we develop emotions out of our experiences and maturation let us know some of the important features of emotions so to start with we experience an emotion when any of the basic needs are not satisfied number 2 under the influence of an emotion we experience physiological changes such as the facial expressions gestures etc our thinking reasoning memory and 
other psychological functions are affected by emotions. During an emotional state, tremendous amount of energy is released which helps facing critical situations. Both maturation and learning play an important role in the development and expression of emotions. Pleasant emotional experiences leads to a happy, good or positive mood. In contrast, unpleasant emotional experiences would lead to sad or negative moods. The experience of emotion can first increase the performance to some extent, but if heightened and prolonged, it will decrease the level of performance. Say for example, you are stressed out for your exam. Then certain amount of stress is required to perform well in the exam. But if it is heightened and prolonged, then it will decrease the level of performance. Let us know about the next objective of today's program that what is the relationship between motivation and emotion. As we all know that we are motivated to do things which give pleasant emotional experiences and we have a tendency to avoid things which makes us unhappy or sad. Emotions provide energy for motives. For example, the more we get angry, the more we will fight. So this was about how emotions and motives are related. Let us know that what is the relationship between emotion and physiology of the body. That is, when we are under an emotional state, what are the physiological changes that are happening inside our body? Physiological changes that take place during emotional state are produced by the activities of all the internal organs and nervous system. Let us talk briefly about the ones that are very closely related with the emotions. The first is the adrenal glands. That is the activities in the adrenal glands when we are under an emotional state. What happens then? These glands are located near the kidneys. They secrete a hormone called adrenal. The various physiological changes that occur under the emotional arousal are produced by the secretion of adrenal. The second is the changes in the autonomic nervous system. As we have already discussed in the previous programs on biological basis of behavior that autonomic nervous system is divided into two parts. The one is sympathetic system and another is parasympathetic system. Let us know that how both the systems are related to emotions. First is the sympathetic system. This system is active during the aroused states and prepares the body for metabolism of actions needed in various situations. It brings about a dilation of the pupil, increased sweating and heartbeat, dryness of mouth, etc. Second is the parasympathetic system. This system is active when we are calm and relaxed. Activation of this system decreases the heart rate and blood pressure and it increases the digestive activity. All the changes caused by the sympathetic system during the emotional arousal are brought back to a normal state of functioning of this system. This is the activities in these systems are often referred to as fight and flight ideas. The last is the physiological changes that are taking place in the hypothalamus during the emotional arousal. The physiological expressions during emotion are activated by the hypothalamus. What the hypothalamus does? It sends impulses to muscles and glands. The individual whose hypothalamus is injured becomes incapable of experiencing any emotion. So this was how the adrenal glands, the hypothalamus and the autonomic system acts when we are under an emotional state. Let us know something about the expressions of emotions. We reveal our felt emotions not only in bodily responses but also in expressive behaviors. 
as you can see in this picture that how under different emotional states we are expressing our emotions. Sometimes when we are afraid of something or when we are under fear, how the fourth lady is behaving. How the third lady is behaving because she might be curious to know something. Likewise, we can see the different activities of different emotional states in the other three pictures. So this was how do we express our emotions. Now let us come to the next point of discussion which is the key forms of emotional expressions. So what are the key forms of emotional expressions? The first is the startled response. What is a startled response? Walk quietly up to your friend when he or she is deep in thought and yell boo. You will notice rapid closing of eyes and widening of the mouth. The chin tilts up and the arms and legs are bent. This response is an inborn response. That is one of the key component of emotion is a startled response. And you might have seen little babies showing this response when you go to them and you say boo. They will also widen their mouth, they will rapidly close their eyes and their chin will tilt up and the arms and legs will be bent. The second most important component of emotions is the facial expressions. When we talk about facial expressions, then we must know that the facial expressions show three dimensions. We will discuss about these three dimensions one by one. The first dimension of facial expressions is the pleasantness and unpleasantness. That is, the facial expressions represent feeling of pleasantness and unpleasantness. Example, smile and laughter or unpleasantness. As you can see in this picture that this is the facial expressions are depicting two states of emotion. One is of pleasantness or happiness and another is of sadness. The second is the attention and rejection. Attention is expressed by wide opening eyes and an open mouth. Rejection shows contractions of eyes, lips and nostrils. That is when we are attending to some information our eyes are wide open and we are attentive. But when we are rejected by somebody or something then we have a low feeling state. The last dimension of facial expressions is sleep or tension. That is, the sleep and tension refers to the level of relaxation and tenseness or excitement as found when we sleep and when we are angry and anxious. That is, the two different expressions shows the two different emotional state. One is of relaxation can happen when we are deep sleep and the another is the expression is of having a tension that is shown in the present picture. The next key component of emotion is the vocal expressions. Now what are vocal expressions? People express emotions with the help of voice also. You must have noticed that your voice trembles and breaks when you are sad. You groan when you are in pain. Your voice is loud and high pitched in anger. The next key component of emotion are your gestures and postures. That is how do you show different gestures and postures under different emotional states. The gestures and postures that we display during joy differ from those that happen during sorrow. So these were some of the key forms of expressing our emotions. Let us now come up to the another major point of discussion of today's program which is the major emotions. The major emotions are fear, anxiety, pleasure and affection. So these are some of the basic emotions that have been identified in human beings. Now let us come up to the last point of today's program which is the emotional competence. A very important concept that has developed in recent years is the competence. In recent years, the gap between cognition or rationality and emotions is being bridged. It is considered 
that emotional competence, emotional maturity and emotional intelligence are important for the growth of a person. Thus, one needs to understand one's own and other's emotions and learn to express, control and manage emotions in social situations. Promotion of emotional competence has been found central to the overall competence of a person. In recent years, researchers have taken interest in improving emotional intelligence. So this was all about today's program. But before we end up, let us know that what we have discussed today. In today's program, we discussed that emotion is a stirred up state which directs human behavior. Motivation and emotions are closely related. There are subjective, physiological and psychological changes which accompany emotional states. For example, changes in heartbeat, breathing pattern, etc. There are several theories to explain the phenomena of emotion. Number one is the James Ling theory, number two is the Cannon-Bad theory and number three is the Sketcher and Singer theory. The expression of emotions can be understood by observing an individual's facial and vocal expressions, gestures and postures. Fear and anxiety are two important negative emotional patterns. Pleasure and affection are examples of positive emotions. In order to live and grow in an effective manner, development of emotional competence is necessary. One must understand one's own and other's emotions and regulate them properly. So this was all about today's program. I hope you have understood the topic well. Thank you.